Hi, this is Danielle. I'm here with Sam, and I'm learning more about our new user trial funnel. Um, Sam is on the product growth team, and he's got some beautiful dashboards. Take it away, man. So this dashboard shows us for the GitLab.com trials, the conversion rates of people that view that trial form and submit it. Um, and then also I'll get into it in a minute, but also the source, the, the locations that people are coming from and the way that we're doing that is using custom uh, URL parameters. So we can tell where people are coming, what CTAs people are coming from in the product. And then we can talk about this later on, but we can also add that to the website as well. So we can pull it all the way through to revenue is the ideal scenario here. So what we're looking at here is views to the first trial form to submitting the second one. Um, so I can add a link up here, it's not, uh, but the two, for, two page form for signing up for a SAS trial. The first one is the, whatever it is, eight questions that you have to submit. Mm -hmm. And then the second step is where do you want your trial? Is it on your personal namespace or is it on a group? Um, so this is going from the first trial to submitting that second form. So the, all the way to the completion. Um, and we can see that the conversion rate is ticking up nicely. So we've iterated on this forum a few times in the last uh, quarter or so. Um, so we've made it easier so that the group URL doesn't error out if the URL path is already taken. And then the big thing that we did is for, we check to see if you're an existing user or not, and we changed the skip trial logic. So if you're a free user, or sorry, if you're not a user of GitLab, the CTA at the very bottom says, skip trial, continue with free account. And we've switched this so that if you're already a user of GitLab, it just says, go back to my account. Um, so we've removed that, that, that big call to action to say like, oh, it's free, free, free. Uh, and what we've done is we've drastically reduced that skip trial rate for the SAS trials by doing that. Um, so this is stuff that we're constantly looking at. And then we can see on the second form here specifically, the submission rate's actually really high. Um, so we don't lose actually that many people on this page, which is a good thing. So what's the overall see. conversion rate with all these steps from view to conversion? Uh, right around 25% right now. So this is from, I'm confused. This is for, this is view through from first to second trial, but like, um, oh, is that completion rate all the way through? Yeah, that's completion rate all the way through. Okay, cool. So that's really helpful. Um, yeah, obviously it's like, it doesn't feed back to our Google analytics view, but that might not really matter. Um, at least not right now. Yeah. So let me, I'll, I'll scroll down and I'll show you. So this is, um, just to like run through them. This is viewing the first trial form to skipping the trial, which is that CTA that where we changed the logic for existing users. And now we've got it down to whatever this is 17%. Um, and then this is for people that view that second form, which is really like, where do you want your trial? Right. Uh, and the completion rates right in the eighties, which is pretty good. We can get this up probably higher, but, um, 80% is pretty good. Um, and then the view to submit first trial, this is where we're seeing it go up nicely. And that's from the change on the skip trial for okay. existing users. And then what's this one? This is showing us the conversion rate of if somebody selects a group trial or a personal trial. Oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah. So one of the next experiments that we have lined up on the growth team is, and this again, um, for the people listening in the future, we were just talking about why does this form live in product and not on a marketing form. Um, one of the benefits of this being a product form is when this question gets asked, now one of the experiments we're going to quickly run now that we have access to this data is we're going to actually say, okay, if you say that you are using this form or sorry, this trial for your company, we're not even going to show you the personal option. Right. Um, and then we're going to have a second variation where we don't even show the personal option to anyone. And that, what that'll tell us for that cohort is what percent of those users were likely actually looking for a group trial um, because we'll see the uptick in conversion rate to paid for that group. Uh, because there's likely a cohort of people that are just selecting an individual trial because we don't do anything to tell them what a group is right. and the value that a group, you really need a group to see team value in GitLab. Okay, so this is kind of where the marketing question goes, which is obviously group is a much higher leverage conversion rate 
So I would love to find a way to send more people to the places that they need to go to become kind of to be a lookalike for someone who converts as a group user. Like there's definitely pages of GitLab docs and pages of GitLab uh, content that are more geared towards those people and like we could have more aggressive calls to action. So I'm curious, do you have a sense of like the path that led that person to be, to make that choice? We, uh, we don't right now. Um, really the, the call, the, uh, the verbiage on the page off the top of my head is really, it tries to spell out that you should pick a group if you're setting this up for your team. So we try and call it out, but it's still on the user. But do you have a One, sense of like refer, I guess? I'm trying to say like, where were they before they came here? It, so I mean, yeah, uh, referring, yeah, referring is, a, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. It's a little bit tough um, because we don't, we, we, we can tell a little bit about the referring URL, but there's a lot of like pass through URLs. So a lot of times their referring URL will just be the previous page in the trial process. And we can't see, you know, five URLs be before because we're not tracking user ID. Oh, we have a cookie. Uh, you have a cookie on um, Google Analytics. We, we can't track users on Periscope. Once they become a user, we cannot track them at an individual level. Got it. Okay. So that would be the, like the counterpoint, which I'm not trying to make with any convictions. I really don't yeah, feel yeah. strongly, but the counterpoint you could make would be if you had, uh, if it was a non-product form, then you would be able to track deeper into the form and get and answer that question. Yes, but I'll, I'll get to you, I'll get to a point. I'll, I'll show you something in a second here on how we can bridge that gap. Cool. Just make sure um, I'm so understanding so, what you're saying. Not, I'm not making a case for that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, now this shows us the conversion rate by cohort. So this is each week that people sign up for trials. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then how many days it takes for them to convert. So we can see the vast majority of our conversions are coming right at the end of the trial. So it's that 20 to 30 day. Mm -hmm. And then anything this long tail, this isn't saying that their trial was extended this long. It was just that some people upgraded this late after their trial. Right. So some of these, these are probably without digging into the data, these are probably more like, like sales assisted conversations. Mm -hmm. Somebody does a trial and then they have a longer sales cycle working with um, a colleague in the sales department. Now, what we can see for trials with our custom URL um, parameter tracking is we can add um, basically trial source to any URL, and then we can see where they're coming from for particular CTAs. So what I can show you here is this top one um, is telling us for specifically for trial skips, where they're coming from. So this isn't the best. It tells us they're coming from the previous page. Um, but here, let me show you. So for um, .com, we just need to add some JavaScript to the page, to the trial source page, um, or that trial picker page where you pick um, SAS or self-hosted. And then we'll be able to pass through any kind of UTM parameters, at least a custom one. And I can show you how it's structured. Okay. But just to show you in app, I can see all the CTAs that people are coming from to start in app.com trials. Mm -hmm. um, and what we can actually see here is the vast majority are coming from this one that's called the gold call out, which is just this kind of banner that is to start a trial. And that's the and one with, on the pricing page, is that right? Uh, no, it's actually the one, uh, it's on the parent of the, it's what is it? The parent of the project, the project overview page. Um, and then specifically, you can see within this next chart here shows us of these gold callout clicks, the 66% are coming from this specific URL of gitlab.com backslash. You only reach this specific URL when you first sign up for GitLab. It is the very first page you land on and there is a trial banner on that page. So what we're gonna actually test in our backlog, I don't know, in the next mi few milestones, is this clearly shows that the, the vast majority of our trials are actually coming from brand new users mm -hmm. that signed up for free and then selected a trial. So we're actually going to add 
the start tr the trial sign up process in as an experiment into the free user sign up as an option. So right. it won't be required, but we'll ask them during free user sign up, do you want to sign up for a trial? Because this data supports that the vast majority of people or of at least of our trials are interested even from the free user side. Okay, that's really useful. I mean, it supports the premise we're operating on, which is that if we simply grow new user traffic to gitlab.com, like oh, we, we are able to hit most of our other numbers. Yep. There's a pretty predictable path there. It's so like this seems to say that's also the the power laws there as well for you when you look at this. Yeah. And then what this, this is actually what I was referencing before, but um, for tracking sources from um, about DuckitLab, the vast majority are just coming from that, the um, free trial picker page. Uh, but we can add some JavaScript to this page. And then you could add um, UTM, you could pass the UTM parameter into the, like the, the button, the SAS button, just that, that href. Um, and then we would pick it up and we would have it in all of these charts. And then we could give it to you all the way to revenue, the, the exact dollars in revenue. Yeah. How do we get that? I want, I want to be able to update all of our CTAs to give tracking. I mean, yeah. we want to understand the ROI on different activities. Yes, too. That's exactly what I want. Yeah. yeah. We're on the same page. <laughs> We're on the same page. Totally. Yeah. I don't really care how we get there to be totally honest with you. It's much more just, I just, I like to believe that all the activities we're doing are adding up to something. Yeah. So all it's looking at is uh, we have two fields, uh, GLM source, and then a value. Um, and then GLM, I believe off the top, I can check the other report, but I believe it's GLM content. Um, and those, are, that's what's just powering these, these reports. Let's see. Okay. Um, so essentially, um, I can I can help write an issue for you. I don't think it's worth just talking over, but I sent I did this at my last company. The way that we can pass this value is we have JavaScript on your trial picker page mm -hmm. that essentially looks at your the URL which contains your um, your Google Analytics tracking and ideally some sort of CTA reference. And yep. all we do is copy that. Um, Google Analytics over to our GLM source and add it to the href to, for the SAS trial button. Yep. And when the person clicks that, they go into the SAS trial signup flow. And then this report starts distributing specifically which CTAs they're coming from based off of your tracking. Awesome. Yeah. If you want to write an issue, that's awesome. I think what we really should do is, and I'm happy to drive this, is we should make a handbook page that within the marketing team that says, are you building a CTA? Here's like the checklist of stuff you need to do. And this has yeah. to be in there. I mean, we already yeah. want this for other reasons because we're having some consistency challenges with conversion. And this is just another really awesome thing that everyone should be doing. Um, also, we want to feed you data too. Like this is a way for us. Yes. To yeah. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. That was super helpful. Yeah. So that uh, the idea is, um, ideally I want to get to a point where I can say here are all the CTAs that drive the most value to trials and to direct revenue for GitLab. And then we can work together and iterate on which ones are performing the best and what are common traits in those. And maybe the ones that aren't performing the best, do we get rid of them or do we try and work together on cycles on how we can improve them if they're not converting well? Um, so I want to be able to get to a point where we can actually have a dollar value um, for these CTAs so that we can predict future revenue by saying like, oh, you know, Daniel's team did a great job. They increased traffic to this CTA by X percent. And within 90 days, based off our historical data, that's going to generate the business Y amount of IACB. Funny you mentioned that because I'm literally kind of tasked with building a similar view from a budget perspective. So I mean, I know that we have probably a struggle, which is we don't have a lot of historical, so we're going to need to get the track yeah. going. But obviously, that's that just increases my sense of urgency of like, okay, what do I need to do to support you in getting these implemented? And we do have people on our yeah. team who can do that um, audit and go and make those changes. I just would want, love to get like a very basic issue spec from you of like, here's how we would like this to be done consistently. It may be an example. Totally. Yeah. 
Um, and I think the, the, probably the best way to go about it too is, and we can work on this together and I'm not a Google analytics expert by any means, but if we know the, the source traffic to that trial picker page and we can just go top down and pick the um, yeah. biggest sources and just work our way down and get the vast majority of traffic probably pretty quickly um, and then work through all the outliers over time. Yeah, and we have uh, Shane Rice on our team is, is definitely our Google Analytics nerd, and he will be thrilled to work on this. Yes, he is. He, so, he, he always helps me anytime I need help. He's, yeah, he's, he's my right go-to guy. So I will, um, I'm going to post this on Unfiltered if it's cool with you, and I'm going to ask him to just watch this video, because I think based on what he and I talked about this morning, he'll probably be like, sweet, okay, cool, then I don't need to solve this problem, and he'll get pumped about getting these CTAs wired up. So this is a win for everybody. Yeah, no, this is going to be awesome. Cool. I'm going to stop the recording really quick.